in this lesson, I want to talk about event objects in React. So whenever the user does something in the browser, like clicking on a button or typing a character into an input field, any kind of action that the user performs will count as an event. And whenever the user performs that event, the browser will generate a JavaScript object that captures information and details and metadata about the specifics of that event. And in React, the process is very similar. Whenever the user interacts with an element like any of our buttons, React will generate its own object, which is called a synthetic event object. And what that is, is just a plain JavaScript object, once again, with various properties on it that have information about the event that just transpired. And as developers, we are welcome to utilize that information if we care about it or ignore it entirely. It's up to us. So what I want to do in this lesson is show you how we can access that event object. We're not going to need it for anything right now, but I want to show you how we are able to get access to it and some of the helpful data that it can contain. So whenever we provide a event handler like on click to a button, and this is just one of several options, I'm going to show you more in the very next lesson. But whenever we provide the syntax, we of course provide a reference to either a function or a method that React will execute whenever that event occurs. So in this case, whenever the user clicks on the button, React will run the handle login click method right here. Whenever that happens, React will automatically generate the synthetic event object and pass it in as the first argument to the function or method that we specify. So we can actually define that parameter right here. We are not using it right now. So React is generating that object, but the function is not accepting it. So it's just kind of a no op, nothing happens. But if we want to see that object, it's always going to be passed in as the first argument to the function or method that we give React. So right here, I can provide a parameter like event, and we know that that will be React's synthetic event object for the user click. So for now, what I'm going to do is just console log that event object so we can see it in our browser's console. So when I save this, I can open up my console right here. And right now we have nothing because the method hasn't run yet because it's only going to run on the clicking of the login button right here. So when I click login, we're going to run a handle login click. React will generate that synthetic event object. And here we see it printed. That is coming from line number 11. And so this again is going to be a plain JavaScript object with a whole bunch of information about the click event in this case that just happened. So a lot of these pieces of information are probably not helpful for us right now and what we're doing in the context of a user form. But you can see information like where the user was on the screen as far as the x and y coordinates right here for where they clicked. As you scroll down, you can see there's a whole bunch of different properties related to movement, again, where they were on the page or the screen. Here, this shift key property is reflective of whether the user was holding the shift key when they pressed the button. Obviously, not really helpful for us, but it's a good uh, demonstration of the kind of properties and metadata that are on these types of, of event objects. It's just details about what happened in the form of various key value pairs, various properties on this event object. So I can show you once again, if I hold my shift key, as I'm doing right now and press the login button again, here is my new event. And as I scroll down and look at shift key, you can see right here, it now has a Boolean of true. So it's just a whole bunch of information about what happened. This target property is actually going to be a reference to the DOM node, the entire DOM node that was the click or that the click was uh, acted on, right? So we clicked on this button right here with all these classes and that is captured in this target property. It's a reference to the actual DOM node in our browser. So it goes to show that all of these properties are directly related to the event and they're all just captured in this object which is always going to be available as the first parameter or the first argument to the method or function that we provide for that event. So whenever we provide on click or any other event, and I'll show you more in just a moment, uh, React is always going to generate an event object for that specific event. And that object may have different properties, by the way, depending on what that event was. And it's going to pass in that object to your handler method slash function. Whether you want to utilize it is up to, up to you. It doesn't really matter in this case, but obviously in other scenarios, it is important to get that object so that we can get certain properties and values from it and use it within our component. And we'll have more examples on that later. All right, that's all there is to cover in this lesson. So I will see you in the next one.